Praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly glad to be here one more time. And we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of our salvation. Amen. And it's just a privilege to come before you. Amen. Once again. And uh, we're going to be discussing in this lesson. It might be a two part uh, lesson uh, on how to renew your mind according to the will of God. That's going to be the topic of our discussion today. We want to invite them, the presence of the Lord here because, you know, we can't do it without him. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by his spirit. So, gracious Father God, we thank you for this, another opportunity, Lord God, to minister to your people, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you would just enlighten our minds, Lord God. We ask that you would give us illumination, Lord God. By your spirit, Lord God. You said it's not by might, it's not by power, Lord God, but it's by your spirit that you do all things, Lord God. So we pray that your spirit will just have preeminence, Lord God, in our time of, of studying your word, Lord God. And looking into this perfect law of liberty, Lord God, this perfect law of freedom, Lord God. That we might behold wonderful things out of your law, Lord God. And God, we got confidence, Lord God, that if you you said if we ask anything according to your will, not only would you hear us, Lord God, but you said you will grant us the petitions that we desire of you simply because we ask according to your will, Lord God. So we set ourselves in agreement with your will this day, Lord God. And we ask asking that you will have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Revelation knowledge will flow freely, Lord God. Think through our minds, Lord God. Speak through our vocal cords, Lord God. Let it be all of you, Lord God, and none of us, Lord God. And we'll be so careful to give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. And we'll give you the praise for us in Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. Amen. How to... Renew your mind according to the will of God. And our foundational scripture will be found in uh, 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15. And it reads, I'm reading out of the message uh, translation. And I'm going to read from verse 13 to verses 15. It says, my purpose in writing is simply this that you believe in God's son believe in God's son will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life the reality and not an, an illusion and how bold and free we then become in his presence freely acting according to his will sure that he is listening and if we're in if we're confident that he's listening we know that what we asked for is as good as ours so that's why it's so important for us uh, to re to renew our minds according to the will of God because that gives us the confidence and it gives us the boldness that if we, are, that it, that if we set ourselves in agreement with God's will, uh, whatever we be, whatever we are believing God for, the Bible said we know we can have confidence that He's going to do it for us. You know, because we have set ourselves in agreement with His will, and but that takes uh, the renewing of our mind to get in agreement with God's will. Amen. Uh, let me, let's uh, look at that in another translation. First John five verses 14 and 15. This is in the contemporary English version. And this is what it says. We are certain that God will hear our prayers when we ask for what pleases him. And if we, Know that God listens when we pray. We are sure that our prayers 
have already been answered. See. So when we, you know, renew our minds to the will of God, you know, we know that it's, it's already done. It's already done. You know, when Jesus died upon that cross, he said, it is finished. Because it's the finished works. That's what we put our confidence in. We don't put our confidence in ourselves, but we've, we put our confidence in the finished works of Christ. See? But that only comes about by uh, renewing our minds. If you're not, if you don't have a renewed mind, you won't have confidence in the finished works of Jesus. Uh, let, let's look at it at in, in one more uh, uh, version, and this is the uh, American Standard Version, and this is how it reads. Uh, and this is the boldness which we have towards Him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions which we have asked of him. You know, we already got it. We already got it because we are operating in his will, We're operating in his best, amen, you could say. This is why it is so important for us to renew our minds to the will of God. Because we want God's best. Amen. We, we don't want his good, his good will or his acceptable will. We want his perfect will. Amen. When we are believing him for, uh, you know, for things to come to pass in our life. Amen. Uh, let's go to Romans. Romans 12 verses 2 tells us this is the uh, American Standard Version it says and be not fashioned according to this world don't be fashioned don't don't think like this world don't don't let your mind be uh, you know in that direction but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. See, that's why we renew our minds according to the will of God. That we can prove what is the good and acceptable and it's perfect will. Amen. And we want to operate in that perfect will. God has a good will. He has an acceptable will. But we like to operate in his perfect will. You know, that's God's best. You could say you know, we like to operate in God's best. Amen. Let's look at that in a, a, another translation, Romans 12, verses 2. This is in the Good News translation, and this is how it reads. Do not conform yourself to the standards of this world. Don't, don't think like the world. But let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. That mind got to be changed. Then you will be able to know the will of God. See, once your mind is renewed, you'll be able to know the will of God. What is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect towards him. You know, you'll understand that. So you can have confidence. You won't have to uh, doubt. You won't have to vacillate. You know, up and down, whether, you know, it's God's will to forgive you of your sins or whether it's God's will uh, to fill you with his power, the power of his spirit. Whether it's God's will to heal your, your physical body, where, you know, where, where, where is your physical body is concerned or whether it be the will of God to uh, prosper you. Amen. You'll know that beyond the shadow of a, of a doubt. Whether it's God's will to uh, uh, put his protection over your life or to give you security or eternal life. You'll know these things when your mind has been renewed to the will of God. Amen. Let's, let's go to uh, Philippians 2 verses 5. This is the good news translation. 
and this is the attitude. When your mind is renewed, this is the type of attitude you'll have. Uh, and it says, the attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. Now let's look at that. Uh, Philippians 2, verses 5 through 10. And this is in the Living Bible now. Uh, it says, your attitude should be the kind that was shown by Jesus Christ, who though he was God, you know, this is God Almighty, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, see, but laid down, uh, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a, a slave and becoming like men. And he humbled himself even further going so far as actually to die a criminal's death on the cross. See, that was the mindset of Christ who is God. Now if God Almighty, amen, can humble himself, you know, come on, hey, we got to get with the picture, you know. We got to renew our minds and God's mindset, you know. He didn't demand his rights as, 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 as God. But he, he took upon him the form of a servant. You know, that was the attitude that he had. And if we're going to uh, get anywhere with God, you know, we got to humble ourselves, people. We got to humble ourselves. It's so, it's so much pride, so much pride in the world. You know, but that's what it says. All that is in the world is pride and, and the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So much pride in the world, but you know, you're not gonna get anywhere with God with that attitude. Let's see. Now let's look at this here. Now let's look at this. Verses nine. Listen to what this says. Yet because, yet it was because of this, because this mindset that Jesus had. Of this that God raised him up to the highest of heaven and gave him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the sea see so Jesus was willing to take the low you know he was willing to you know take the humble the humble way and, listen, and, and you see what God did? You know, he exalted him. And that's what the Bible says. You know, he that uh, humble himself shall be exalted. But he that exalts himself, you're going to be brought down to a base. See? That's why the carnal mind cannot understand uh, God's ways because it's totally opposite. It's, it's totally opposite of our, uh, the, our carnal minds. You know, it's just, it goes against the grain. You know, it don't make sense, so to speak, you know. But let's read that in the, the King James Version. Let's read that in the King James Version. Uh, Philippians 2, verses 5 through 10. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in uh, Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has, wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth See? so that's the type of uh, attitude we, we want to have we want to have that same mindset that uh, 
mindset of humility and God would do great things with that type of mindset you know as well as well if I take that type of mindset everybody gonna try to get over me if I no, they're not gonna get over you God is not gonna allow that see they thought they had got over on Jesus but now we bow down to the name of Jesus every knee bows <laughs> every tongue confesses that he's Lord of Lord Kings of Kings he's the great potentate he's the God of the universe the God of all creation Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, we just have to, you know, renew our minds according to the will of God. And, and uh, God got great things in store for us if we take the route, you know, by doing it his way. Amen. Uh, let's go to Romans. Uh, Romans 8 verses 5 and, si 5 and 6. It says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's all they're thinking about. You know, they that after the flesh do mind the things of the, of, uh, 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 of the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I don't know about you, but that's self-explanatory. You know, if you if you want to live in that carnal mindset, that fleshly mindset, to be sense rude, it's going to end in death. It's going to end in death. But have that. But if you got that spiritual mindset, the Bible says that you can have life and peace. You know. I don't know about you, but I like that latter part. I would like life and peace, amen? See, and that comes by renewing your mind to the will of God. You can have life and peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, amen? Uh, let's go to Philippians uh, 4, verses 6 through 9. And this is in the Living Bible translation. And this is what, listen to what this says. This is, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. See, take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's take it to him. And he can do something about it. But you worrying it, you know, by you worrying it, you can't do nothing about it. You're just going to worry yourself, you know, you know, into depression and, and all that type of stuff, you know. But it's a tell God your needs, you know. And we serve a, a wonderful father. And that's what Jesus did. He took every he took every concern that he had, he took it to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven. Holy is your name. See? He took it to the Lord and he just began to just worship him. Worship him. That's what Jesus spent most of his time doing in prayer. It's worshiping the Father, giving him, giving him adoration and, and praise and thanksgiving and telling God who he, who he is, you know, everything. He's, he's I am, the great I am. Everything that you need God to be, he's that and more. And so he's, he's your source, see? And that's what Jesus, he understood that, that God was his source. So he went to God for everything. See, and that's what we got to do. You know, that's what, that's what Paul is saying here. Uh, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell tell God your need, you know, because He can, He can, He can meet your needs. You see, that's what the, we were just right, that foundational scripture. Uh, we got confidence. Did we ask anything according to His will? God is going to hear us and grant us the petitions that we desire of Him. And and it says, uh, you know, and don't forget to thank Him for his answers let's begin to praise him and thank uh, give him thanksgiving give him thanksgiving see that's God desires that you know that we give him thanks you know be grateful you know things might not be uh, you know perfect or as, well, uh, or as well as we desire them to be but thank God for things being as well as they are amen 
to learn how to be uh, thankful and watch, I mean, watch God work on your behalf, you know. But this is the mindset you have to have. And this mindset only comes by renewing your mind to the will of God, you know. It says, if you do this, you know, you know, this. Thank God for his goodness, his mercy, his grace. And thank God that, you know, he's already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. But it's through the knowledge of him that called you to his glory and virtue. Whereby, uh, uh, Peter said, are given unto us these great and precious promises. That by these promises we, we partake of his divine nature. And Jesus said, it is finished. You know, I done provided for you everything, you know. You just got to get in my wheel and see how I uh, operate. That's what Jesus was telling the people in his day, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added. See, put the kingdom of God, the advancement of God's kingdom first and watch all your other needs be met. Amen. Uh, but this is, this is what it says in Philippians uh, Four, seven. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. See, his peace will keep your thoughts and your heart, hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in him. See, learning how to just trust in him. And we serve a great big God. We serve the God of all flesh. And there's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too hard. All things are possible to the to this God that we believe in. All things are possible to, to him. Amen. So that's why we just trust in him. We rest in him. And it says, verse 8. And now, brethren, as I close this letter... Let me say this one more thing. It says, fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. See, take that mindset. Just focus on the positive. Don't focus on that negative stuff. You know, focus on the positive thing. things. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about it. You know, you know the Bible says in Philemon 1, 6, it says that the, that the communication of our faith may become effectual. How? By the acknowledging, Paul said, of all the good things that we have in Christ Jesus. See? It'll take you the rest of the <laughs> the year, amen, to begin to acknowledge all the good things that we have in Christ Jesus, you know. And we like to focus in on the bad instead of the good. We got so many good things. Focus in that God has already provided healing for you. He has already provided uh, provision for you. He has already provided uh, the empowerment of his spirit. You can do all things through Christ, which enables you. He empowers you. To give you the ability and the might, not in your own strength, but in the strength of, of him, of, in, the, in the Lord, you know. Uh, all you can praise God for and be glad about it. And he says here, you know, this is, uh, we got to keep on applying these things in our life. It said, keep putting into practice all you learned from me and saw me doing see i was an example paul you know and paul was a, a, a good example and, and jesus was a good example and all the apostles you know when they learned how to renew their mind according to the will of god were uh, excellent examples on how to do this and he said after you do that the god of peace will be with you see it will be with you And so I got one more scripture for you, and that's found in Isaiah 26 and 3. And this is what it says in the King James Version. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, 
because he trusts in thee. See, our trust and confidence in, is in, in God. This is a God that holds the universe in his hands. This is a God that created the universe. <laughs> you know, this is who we, we are putting our confidence and our trust in. You know, and He's gonna keep us in perfect peace. Let me look at it in the. Let's look at it in the uh, the Living Bible. And it says, he will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in him. See, you got to trust in the Lord. Whose thoughts turn often to the Lord. You know, not looking at the situation, not looking at the circumstance, but looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. So I just want to leave you with that. Isaiah 26 and 3. Well, we trust that this was a good word for you. Amen. And uh, stay tuned for part uh, two on how to renew your mind according to the will of God. And once you do that, saints, you, uh, people, you're, you, you're going to find satisfaction. You're going to find great reward, great manifestations of God's goodness being manifested in your life. Until next time, God bless you. Amen.